Holy Road Church in the heart of Old Southampton has long been known as the Sailor's Church. Today it stands as a blitzed ruin serving as a memorial to the Merchant Navy. There have been at least three Holy Road churches spanning a thousand years of Southampton's history. The first church was built in the late Saxon period. The term Holy Rood meant Holy Cross in the Saxon language and originally there may have been a Holy Cross erected nearby. After 1066 the Normans slowly began reshaping the layout of the town and Holy Rood Church found itself in the main street. Its parishioners included the wealthy merchant class who donated generously to the church so that prayers could be said for themselves, their loved ones and for the safety of their ships and cargoes. The tower is the most spectacular part of the ruins and dates back to 1320 when a new church was built on this spot. Over the centuries many changes have been made and evidence of raised floor levels, blocked doors and windows can be seen everywhere. Around the north side of the church can be seen evidence of the Holyrood Vicarage built around 1550. Building the new house necessitated blocking up the north windows of the church. The brickwork design is typical of the period. The church was virtually rebuilt again in 1848 when much of the west front, roof and chancel were renewed. The two grooves mark the roof line of the new porch. So what did the church look like inside? This later view gives us some idea. It consisted of a central nave and two side aisles with vaulted and panelled ceilings. In the aisle stood a fine 15th century font. It had an octagonal panelled bowl and stem with angels beneath. The rare 14th century lectern, which stood in the church for over 500 years, was rescued from the blitzed ruin and can now be seen in St Michael's Church nearby. This is a photograph of the 17th century silver chalices on Holy Rood's altar. On either side are the flagons of 1765. Another interesting fixture can be seen in this old photograph. On the right is the helmet of a medieval knight mounted on the chancel wall, possibly left by a thankful soldier upon his safe return. Here are the 16th century choir stalls photographed in the 1930s. Some were carved with the motto of the Bishop of Winchester. These three photographs were taken around the same time. Holy Rood has also played its part in the history of a nation. In 1554, Philip of Spain landed in the town with 140 ships and was greeted by a group of lords and noblemen. He stayed in the town for three days and heard mass in Holy Rood. His entourage then travelled on to Winchester where he married Queen Mary, the daughter of King Henry VIII. This is the tomb of Richard Taunton, a wealthy 18th century wine merchant. He made his fortune by financing a privateer ship which captured a French galleon full of treasure. He used the money to found Taunton's school. The two figures in an opening at the front of the tower are quarter jacks. Nobody knows how old they are. The style of their armour suggests 16th or 17th century. 
A written document from around 1760 says they were considered even old then. When they were taken down in 1875, it was discovered that one jack had beaten a hole right through the bell from striking it so many times over the years. Below the quarter jacks is an interesting memorial to Charles Dibdin, a songwriter and dramatist and native of Southampton. He was the Andrew Lloyd Webber of the Napoleonic period. His most famous song, Tom Bowling, is often played on the last night of the proms. Another memorial plaque on the West Front tells the 7th of November 1837, a terrible fire broke out in a nearby warehouse. 22 men were killed. The building was a storehouse for varnish, turpentine and oil. Not surprisingly, the fire spread rapidly, engulfing those inside. In 1862, Lord Palmerston visited Southampton to open the Hartley Institute, forerunner of the University of Southampton. Crowds lined the streets and climbed upon the church to get a view of the great man. A spectator on the roof did dislodged a stone ball ornament which came crashing down to the ground. Astonishingly, nobody was killed or injured and to commemorate this, the town mayor ordered a cross to be built into the pavement. In 1874, the remains of Dr. Livingstone, the famous African explorer and missionary, arrived in Southampton and were brought to Holyrood Church to rest for the night. Next morning, huge crowds assembled to see the hearse off to the railway station. Every year it was traditional for the bells to be rung upon the arrival of a new ocean liner, as in 1907 for the Adriatic. In the First World War, many soldiers and sailors passed the old church as they made their way to the docks for embarkation. By the 1930s, the area outside Holyrood Church had become established as the place to see in the new year. The ceremony was known as On the Ashfelt and crowds would gather to dance and hear the bells strike in the new year at midnight. In 1939, with imminent threat of war, King George VI and Queen Elizabeth cut short their overseas visit and returned to Southampton. Their motorcade drove along the high street and this would be the last procession to pass the complete church. On Saturday the 30th of November 1940, the church was all but destroyed in a raid. Incendiary bombs set fire to the roof and as it burnt, the church warden, helped by two passing soldiers, drag the medieval lectern to safety. The rising heat in the church was so great that the bells began to ring. People sheltering in the medieval vaults beneath the high street heard the bells toll as the roof collapsed and the ancient church entered its death thralls. Despite its ruinous state, locals kept the church alive by continuing to celebrate the new year throughout the war years. On the evening of D-Day, a service was held inside the Blitz Ruin to pray for the success of the Normandy landings. After the war, it was decided that Holy Rood should be left as a memorial to the Merchant Navy, which lost 36,000 men in the conflict. In 1956, a huge anchor was placed in the church and the following year, a brass plaque unveiled. The anchor dates from around 1850. It weighs 1.8 tonnes and was dredged from Southampton water. The city's Titanic Memorial, dedicated to the crew, was moved here in 1972 from the common.
Another maritime memorial was unveiled in 1983, commemorating those merchant seamen killed in the Falklands War. Today, Holyrood Church remains at the heart of Southampton. Battered but proud, it stands timeless as a constant reminder of a thousand years of the city's history. <laughs>